Welcome back to this video series on a login system with Angular, Node, and MySQL. In the previous videos, we've set up the login and sign up functionality. And in the previous video, we started to work on the post. And in particular, we worked on the back end of it. So in Node, we we're able to make requests to an API to be able to create posts or uh, get or fetch all the posts and delete a particular post. So what we'll do in this video is we will implement the UI side of things in Angular. So we'll create the functionality in Angular to create the post and you know delete the post and fetch all the post. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to, since we're dealing with authenticated routes, we will put a well, we will create a JSON Web Token interceptor, which will attach the cookie with the JSON Web Token, and that will be sent off with our API request. And we'll also implement some route guarding and reroutes, and also we can delete it if it is the user that is logged in and that created the post. So with that, let's go ahead and look at our project we have so far and we have collapsed the menus and folder structure and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop the server here for the front end I'll keep the server for the back end running but I'll just end that because I want to create a few things on the client side and let's just open up the folder structure here and in the source folder in the app folder where our application lies. We want to, in the models here, we have a model already for user, but we want to have a model for post. So if we create a new file, capital P, for post, and that will be .ts for TypeScript. <clears throat> now we can copy the shape of this interface, and we can put it in here we can close it up and if we take a look at our MySQL database here we can see that we've created a ID title body user and created fields for that particular post table so we can just go ahead and create that shape there so we're going to have an ID um, and that's going to be a number also but we'll just rename this to post and then we'll have a title which will be a string. We'll have a body, which will also be a string. We'll have a user, and we can have this created, which will be a date. So now that we've got the model for our post, we can start to have a look at a few things here. So recall that we made this post component previously when we're generating our posts and this is going to be responsible for rendering all of our posts so there's nothing in it just yet but what we want to have is we want to actually we want to have another component that's a form that we can fill in to create the posts so they're two separate components however the create post will be nested within this post page. So let's go ahead and create that and we know how to do that. We can use the Angular CLI to use the Angular command to generate a component and we'll put this in the components folder and we'll call it create post and we'll skip having the spec file for testing purposes. So we can just say we can skip the test equal to true and this will generate a new folder create post where we can open that up and here we'll start to create the UI for our API request that we'll implement soon based on the functionality from the previous video so okay we Let's just start off by having some dummy data here. And what I want to do is I just want to render the app create post directive 
or well component that we just created just to make sure everything's working okay and I'll just render say the map card so we've already imported that into the app module and then I'm just going to have three divs here so I'm just going to use Emmet and do this times three now in the first div I'm just going to say post title as a placeholder in the second one I'll have post body as a placeholder actually I might have created at and I might just say the 7th of the 4th 2020 and finally I'll just have a post body and if I run an npm start We'll just load up the front end here and we're not expecting too much here just some dummy text to render the components there and we haven't actually done any route guarding yet so if we go to post refresh that we can see that we have one card here we have this other component where we're going to have a form and then we're going to have this on a for loop where we can show all of the titles and bodies and the date in which a user created a post. So let's just add a little bit of styling here to the post component and I might just add a class here for the post title and I will have a similar thing here for the post date or I might just say post metadata and I'll have another class here, um, post body. So with that, if I open up the SCSS file on the map card, we might just give it a little margin bottom for the next one below it of just 1M or 16 pixels in the base default size. and we might just give everything a larger font size of 24 pixels and nested within that map card we just created well we haven't created this yet um, so let's not do it but I'll have a post title and now I was referring to a, a button to delete it but we'll implement that soon and actually we could implement it now that's no big deal so we can just say in the a, HTML here we can have a button and right now I won't be doing anything but it will just be a map icon button and the idea is to just display this if the user has logged in and it's their post and then we'll display this map icon with a color worn or like the red sort of color and then we'll just have delete here so we'll come back to this and we'll check that it's a logged in user. Um, but what we can do is we can, now that we've created a button here in SCSS, we can just float it to the right. The post title will make that bold. So we'll give it a font weight of bold. And I'll just copy this down for the post meta and post body so the font size for this post metadata will make that a little smaller we'll make that 16 pixels and we'll give it a style of italic just to distinguish it uh, from the title and the body and the body itself will just give it a little bit of margin top here of 1m so let's see what this gives us so okay, so we get something slightly nicer, we get this delete icon here that will eventually hook up to delete it if they're logged in. We've got this title here, this created at, and a post body. So that's the starting point. So what we can do now is we can start to, uh, let's see, before we actually fetch the data and cycle through it and stuff like that, let's create the form for the create post works 
So let's go ahead and do that. And we should be able to copy some of the functionality from the previous post that we created. So we, I mean login forms, so like the login form itself or the sign up form, I might copy the login form. So if we open that up and let's see in the login component here, we'll open that up and just put it here at the end here. I'll just um, I'll just close these posts for now. They're just going to get in the way just for now. But I'll open this login component, the TypeScript and the HTML file, and we can start to copy the shape of the TypeScript to create the form control. So when we create a post, we're going to have um, a form group, and we're just going to have a title and a body as input fields. So we can go ahead and copy some of this stuff in here. So, okay. Let's say, okay, let's just copy some of this stuff in. So let's get this in here like that. Into the create post component. That's coming from Angular Forms. And we can just create a form, and I might just call it form, just in the, below the class, as a property. So we're creating a form group here. And then we can, okay, I'm not going to um, inject this service just yet. We'll just work on the shape of things first. So I'll just get this login form here, like that. And that's instantiated on the ng on init. So I'll just change this form and then I'll create this create form group method here. So I'll copy that in. And now we have our form. Now we're just going to rename this to title and this to body. And rather than have validators email here, we can have validators min length. And I believe we set it up on the server so that the title has a minimum length of five. And we can make the body have a minimum length of 10, I believe we made them. So we want them to be the same, to have a nice experience for the user. And then also have both server side and client side validation here. Now we will have a on submit button, but I might just sort of create the UI part first, and then we'll add some bells and whistles to it. And we can sort of copy the shape of this login form, HTML, so I might just copy that, and I can close these up now. So in the create post component, I'm going to have this form, which is a form group. And what we might do here is we might just add a template reference to this because we want to clear the form after they submitted it. So we can just have this sort of form directive and we may as well just call it form directive as well. And this is going to be ng form. So we've got the form group, we've got the form directive, we've got this ng submit. So we're going to have to handle that on submit. So we'll create that shortly. And this no validate to uh, make sure that the HTML default validation isn't going to override our custom validation we have set up in our form group validators. So let's just save that to reformat it a little bit. And okay, so we can just change this email field here to post title. And the form control name is now title. And we can have this password field renamed to, let's see, post body. And this, of course, will correspond to the body 
form control field that we just made. So I might just remove this placeholder here and also here. And then if the form is not valid, we'll disable it from submitting. Otherwise, they can go ahead and they can just post the request. And I'll just make a sign up function or on submit function that won't really do much at this stage. But let's just say what we want it to do. And let's say we just want it to take the form data so we can pass in the form data into this value here because we created um, this form group on it and we can get the value of that form group. So for that form group, we can get the value of that. And if we submit, we'll get this ng submit. And what we can do here is on submit, we can just print out the JSON object that we have here. So we're going to have some form data come in. And this is going to be of the type post title or top body. So recall we made that post object or model just here. We want the type title and body. So we just want to pick those out from the post uh, model and we can just get the title or the body here. So that's what we're picking out from the post model. So we may as well just import that in here. So we have access to that particular type. And we're not going to expect anything back. So we'll just put void here as a return type. Now, what we can do is we can just simply console.log the form data. And we can also, since we have the form um, and the form directive, we can reset them. So this will just reset the text back to empty. And we also want to mitigate any errors remaining that we just set up. So after we clear it, we're going to have this required and min length errors occur. So that's why we created the form directive. So it's just a slightly different way that we can achieve the reset without having the validation errors here. And we can just do something like this. Now this of course means we will have to um, have access to this form directive. So we can just go ahead and we can say view child and we're viewing the form directive element. So that is corresponding to this template reference to the form template element. And this is, we'll just call this form directive. So that's what we use below of the type ng form. Thus, we can clear our um, input without any errors occurring. So right now, and I might just add a little bit of styling to this while we're here. So to do that, in the SCSS, I might just say for the mat form field and the button, I'll give it a width of 100%. And for the button itself, I'll just give it a little bit of margin bottom to separate it from the displaying of all the posts. So I'll just close that up here. And if we relook at it, we get a nicely formed um, post title and post body here. Now, my password manager's uh, sort of filling the data here, but if I just wanted to do a post title and record has to be five digits long, so 
So once it hits five, that's okay. And this, okay, so what I should do here before I try it out is just remove the uh, password type from the field because that was just taken from the sign up or login spot. So now if I enter five letters and then I enter less than five in the body, but then I make it more, then this post button occurs. I can click post and it clears it without any errors and it also logs it to the console. So this data here that's just logged to the console, we will create a service that will make the API call to the back end in which we created in the previous video based on that data. Um, but just before we do that, I would like to add a little bit more to this project. So So what I might do actually is I might just create this service and we're going to add a few things before we um, continue to see what we're working on. So I'll just exit out of the front end server and I'll just generate a component here. So NGGS in our services folder. I want to have a post service without the test file. So I enter that command in there like that and in the services folder we now have this post service here and we've seen in the auth service how we can make the API calls and we're going to be doing a similar sort of process here in the post service but before I move on to that there's just one thing to note, and that is in the create post, what we wanna do is when we're dealing with this nested component, so this is the child component in the post page, we wanna send this data to the parent, which is the post component, and to do that, we will need to use an event emitter. So, to make a event emitter, we need to, uh, well, we need to emit the event from the child component. So this create post is the child component. So we need to say okay, and we can do this below with the at output directive. And we will need to import this, of course. Um, and it's auto imported for us from Angular Core. And I might just create this method here and it's called create. And the idea of this is this create method, this is going to be output to another component and in particular, a parent component. So when we click the submit button, we want to output an event to the parent. So we have access to the data in the parent because it's in the post component that we're going to have to update the UI. So say we post a component, well, we've rendered all of the posts in that post component. So to sort of based on that observable, when we submit a new post, we need to update all of the posts to render them so there's no refreshing involved and we can just see it seamlessly. So to do that, we just create this create functionality which can be put onto the post. And this is of type event emitter and we can just be of any type here and this is a new event emitter and I believe we may need to import this okay we got something here object that can emit events uh, type event emitter is not generic okay we will need to import that to alleviate that error 
So I might just chuck this on from Angular Core and we can get the event emitter. Uh, let's see here. Event emitter. Okay, there's no real reason I can see for this. Oh, we have a double import here. So that would be what that was erroring about. But now we have the event emitter from Angular Core and we have created this output event that will be on the component that is nested within its parent component as a event. So what we can do is we need to emit that event to the parent and we can just you know if we click the button here what we can do is we can just say okay this dot create which is the event we're emitting we can emit this to the parent and you know there's no real need to have anything in here we just want to tell the parent that we are doing something so that means when we emit the event if we come to the location of where this component is we can open up the post component to find that spot and that means on the app create post component so this component we're just working with when we click the submit button or post button here this will fire the event such that the information from this child component that's nested within this post component the event will be triggered and that is the create event that we just made and then we can call our own function here create post and it's in this create post function that we can actually make the call itself so I might just run an npm start here so we can confirm what we've just created and why that's loading I will in the TypeScript just create the create post functionality so create post and this will return nothing so void and I might just say printed from parent post component slash page So now if we refresh our browser and we type in a post title and a post body, we can post that. And if we post it, we get the you know we get the title and the body which is expected because that's directly on the create post component on the on submit method. We post that, but then we emit the event create which we created through this event emitter with the output syntax to output that to the parent where it's nested within the post page which will trigger this method here and the reason we trigger that method is because we want to use a method from the component that um, is the parent of that which is where the data will be flowing through through a service so we can render the post but for now I just put this printed from parent post component so we could clearly see the functionality behind what was going on there so that's the start of our um, UI mainly now we want to create some service here and we've got this post service here and we can copy a few things from this auth service potentially so we can just have a look at some of the 
you know the we want this HTTP client and we want the headers so we can copy that in there some other things we might like to copy is the error handler service and the user model and in addition to the user model we may want the post model that we just created so I'll rename this post from post models post and we may want some observables and of course the ability to catch errors and handle it in this error handler service here so that's going to be imported from rxjs so we can import the observable from rxjs and we can get the catch error from the operators in rxjs so let's get those just like that and with that in our constructor what we can do is we can use this HTTP client so we can make HTTP request and also a error handler service that we created in our previous videos to handle any errors that go wrong so we can inject that in the following way by putting HTTP to set to the type of that HTTP client from angular common slash HTTP and we can also have a private injection of the error handler service so we have the functionality from that service accessible in this TypeScript file. So, similar to before, we may want to have a URL here and some HTTP options. So I'll just copy that in there. And we can have that private variable there. And rather than the auth route, on port 3000 local host we can now have this post route similarly we can pass in that we have the content type in the JSON format by passing in these HTTP options as a variable so this is where we can create and connect to our API by um, having this service return the observable for the post type data that we want i.e. to fetch all the data to create a post or to delete a post so let's go ahead and implement that functionality so we can use it in our components so I might just start off with the fetch all and we're going to do a similar sort of thing here um, but it's a little different, but it's going to have the same sort of shape here like this. So I might just copy this shape. And I'll copy this in here. And I'm going to call this first one fetch all. And it's going to return an observable of all of the posts. So we want to fetch all the posts. So we return the type of an observable of all the posts. And this will not require any arguments because we're simply making and executing the SQL query to get all from the post table. So we can make a get request here. And it's going to be of the type post array. So we're going to get an array of posts. And we can just simply remove this template literal syntax here altogether because we only need this URL, i.e. the localhost 3000 slash post URL, and we don't need to pass in any data here. So what we can do for this particular case is, um, so we're not actually posting anything here, so we can just say that we're expecting the response type to be of JSON. So we can say, in an object of properties here we can say the response type is expected to be JSON now we can pipe and we won't need this first here because we're going to be doing some adding the async pipe in the HTML which is a nice way to 
ensure there's no memory leaks. But we can indeed catch it and we will handle the error in the case that there's an error with the post array type. And then I'll be able to pass in here, okay, if there's an error with this fetch all method, we can go ahead and we can return a empty observable of the type post in an empty array. And of course this response type shouldn't have a colon here, it should just be like that. And with that we have access to send a API request and retrieve an observable of the post. And we can implement the create post as well and also the delete post. So let's go ahead and implement those. So if we have this create post method here, accessible by the service, we know that it's going to return an observable of the type post. So we can do that like that because we're doing an asynchronous, asynchronous operation with the post data. So with that, we have particular data and we're gonna have data from the form that we just created. So I might just have one variable here and this will be say a partial of post which you know is also equivalent to the um, picking the post title and body so we're going to have a partial of the post and this is the particular type we're going to have here of the post uh, model so we can what we can do is we can sort of copy this sort of shape here again and just adjust a few things here. So of course, rather than having this response type JSON, um, and it's a post request as well, so we need to make that a post request of the post here. So we're posting some stuff of the post. And what we can do is, it's the same URL address, but we need to pass a JSON object in of the data and we set up the API to handle it to be in the form that the title will be based on the form data dot title. The body will be from the form data body and the user is just simply the user ID. So that will need to be passed in as well and we can set this here to user ID and we can just pick something from the user and the particular property that we're picking is the ID field. So we've now used all of our libraries there and dependencies and whatnot. So of course we're going to get the user ID and attach it with our request but we'll need to um, set up the generic service to take that data and then we'll implement the functionality of utilizing this service through the components. So <coughs> the third option is adding the HTTP options because we need to inform that the content type will be in the JSON format. And then we need to pipe and catch any errors and we can catch the post error. And because the it's not an array, we can expect a nullish return or an empty string, let's say. Um, oh, sorry, not an empty string, an empty post. And that's related to empty, uh, to create posts. So if I save that, I've created the service there for the create post. So the last part to the puzzle here is allowing users to delete posts. So we'll have a delete post here like this. And of course, to delete the post, we need some way to access the post. And we can see that um, in the post, there's an ID for the post. So that's what we'll use. We'll use the post ID. And once again, that's the particular type from the user. Uh, sorry, not from the user, from the 
um, post and it's the ID from the post and we're expecting an observable back here but we're not expecting anything like back any data back we're just doing an asynchronous operation so we can just say an observable of a blank object will be expected to be back and and an object is the default return type if there's no sort of stuff in it so we can just say return list.http and we can have a delete method here for we're going to delete a post so we can say uh, and we can use the template literal with the ES6 syntax here for this URL because we need to attach the particular ID and if you recall in the previous video that we did this through the route and so for the ID that got passed to it that's the API request that we're going to make and then of course we're going to need the JSON header types so we can pass in these HTTP options and we can pipe this observable so we can catch the errors so I'll just copy this catch error Klaus here and we're going to just rename this to delete post so we've created the fetch all the create post and delete post so we now have everything we need to make the API request so we've created the service so now what we can do is we can sort of connect the post and the create post components to the service. So I might just start off in the post component here and we can of course import it. And let's do that. So we can import the post service that we just created. And this is going to come from uh, well, it's from the source directory in the app, in the services folder, we have the post service. And we can also get the user service as well, because we're going to need access to um, the user to get the user ID, so we can pass in the user ID, so we can, you know, delete a post based on that ID or create a post based on that ID. So let's just open up the auth service just to remind ourselves of what's in there. And there is this is user logged in observable. So that's based on my behavior subject boolean. And then there's also the corresponding ID. So that's why we we'll need the auth service injected in our post component. So let's get that. And we can just get that by importing the auth service from the services folder but this time we just need the auth service and we will need to get the models as well so in the service we imported these models here so I might just import those as well so import post from and we'll just get it from the root directory models slash post and we can also get user as well because we will need these types here as well obviously and we're going to need the observable so we can get that from rxjs because we're going to need to subscribe to the functionality that we just created and we might need some custom observable to be able to do that. So I'll just get that and I'll save the file for the prettier to be implemented here. So we can imp inject those into our constructor here and I have it over in, oh no, I, I, I'll need to get those in this constructor here in the post component. So let's just get the post service. Oops, what happened there? We get the post service of the type post service, and I'll also have a private access to the uh, the auth service. 
from the auth service. So, okay, so now we have what we want to sort of work with here. One thing we need to do is we need to create two variables. So we want an observable for the posts. So let's just add this dollar sign to the property post here, which is of the type observable. And that's an array of all the posts. So we're expecting to get all of the posts, but when we submit a post, let's say, we want to update this post observable variable as well. So we'll just have a variable there for that. And then of course we want the user ID and that's from the user model. So we can just pick the ID out from the user model. So on the ng on init, this is where we can sort of call a few functions here. And this is where we can say, okay, when this post component's instantiated, we can set the post observable to a method here, and I'll need to create this, and we'll create this just shortly in this fetch all method. But I also want to get the user ID accessible from this post component. So let's just set the user ID equal to this dot auth service dot user ID. So let's create the fetch all method here. And I might just create this first because it would happen first is we need to return a type of observable post array. And this can just simply be done by returning this dot post service that we just created and calling the fetch all method. Simple as that. So what's going on here is the service here is has this fetch all method. It requests data from the database. It gets all the rows from our post table in here. So an array of post um, objects. And we can look at the component and we can, when the component's instantiated, we can simply say this service fetch all. And we're going to have um, an async pipe in the HTML, but we'll just continue to work on the functionality here. And there's only one more left to do, and that's the delete method. And okay, so in this create post component here, so when the create post occurs, what's going on is we have, we're emitting an event from the create post component and the event that we're emitting is related to the submission of the form data. So when we submit valid form data that's been validated both you know, on the client and then soon the server, in the post component, that's where we call this create post. So then in this create post, what we want to do is, well, firstly, we're going to fetch all the posts and we fetch all the posts and then we display all the posts. So we display all the posts here in a loop. And because we're displaying all the posts in a loop and we do that on the ng on init, we'll need to recall this fetch all method. So what we can do is we can, and we have this post observable here that we'll add an async pipe to, to handle the memory leaks. All we need to do is we can just set that post variable here and we can just call the fetch all method once again. And that will update the post in real time. So when I click the submission of the post, it will add it to the bottom here and it, you know, we won't need to reload the page for that to happen. So the final method we need in our post component is the ability to delete post. So we're going to get some sort of post ID here and this is going to be of the type um, ID from post so we'll pick that out from the model and we'll get that in. It's not going to return anything so all we really need to do is just call the post service. So we can just say this dot post service dot delete post and we need to in the post ID that we receive 
and we need to subscribe to that event here and we're subscribing to this event for the deletion here so perhaps what we should do also is just add this first uh, property uh, method here from the RxJS operators just to make sure that it's only happening the first occurrence so we don't need to unsubscribe to that. So let's get that going. So then if we subscribe to it, what we need to do is, well, you know, after we get some sort of return back, we can say, we can set this post, the observable that we created, and we can just fetch all again. And that fetching all, once again, because it's been deleted from the database, will seamlessly remove it from this list of postcards that we've rendered here. So we can save that. Now, the next thing that we need to do here is we just need to um, add the asynchronous pipe to our post component HTML. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can open our post here. And we can have, and we're going to have a for loop to display all the data. Right now it's only one, but when we have more than one post, we will need to render all of them. So let's say let post of posts. And that's the dollar sign post, not to be confused with. What we can do is we can add this async pipe because we don't know exactly when it's coming back, so we can wait for it. Now, this this is where we can have our um, this is where we can show if it's the right user logged in or not, and we can have this ng if here, and we can say that if the post dot user is equal to the user ID, then we can have this delete icon here that we are able to click on, and this will call the delete method that we just created from the post ID because we need to pass the ID into that. And we can, of course, now have access to this post. So we have access to all of the properties associated with that post. So we can use string interpolation and we can render that to the UI for each particular card. So let's just do that. And we can have the post body here. And we can save that. And okay, so we are getting an error here. We're getting a 404 not found. So did I make this slash post? I'm just going to check something in the service here. This is just a guess. I can't remember if I made it post or post. But if I make it post, okay, so I get a 401 unauthorized. And uh, let me just take a look at the routes here okay so looks like I made it post plural I might just check in the back end here and I'll look at the routes or actually I think it's in the index even and yes it is just singular post and now that I've used singular post we're getting a 401 because we've added authentication to the request and that's exactly what we want. So what we need to do is to show this data is we need to add some, we need to create a HTTP interceptor because we do actually have the token on the front end but we need to get that from local storage and attach it to our, H, our API request from the client because the client needs to confirm that with the server that you know it's 
authenticated through the secret associated with the JSON web token that's been administered. And we covered those in the previous videos related to the um, the logging in and sort of comparing the hash password and administering a JWT in response to that. So, okay, so what we can do is we can get that. So we can make our request and I might just cancel out here because what I'll do is I'll do an NGGS services and I'm going to create an auth interceptor here. And I don't need a spec file, so I'll skip the test for that. So NGGS services slash auth interceptor. And what this will do for us is we'll create the auth interceptor service here. And I'll chuck this on the end here like that. Now, this particular service is going to require a few things, namely from Angular Common HTTP. So let's just import that library here for us. So at Angular slash common slash HTTP. This is where we want HTTP event, HTTP interceptor, HTTP handler, and HTTP request. We're going to intercept our API request and attach the JSON web token associated with the logged in cookie from local storage. So in the auth interceptor, and it's going to be an asynchronous event, so we might need to get the observable from RxJS as well. So let's go ahead and get that. Now, this particular auth service is going to implement the HTTP interceptor class. So we're going to use all the functionality that's been built in from Angular Common HTTP interceptors to intercept the HTTP request. So we can just do that by implementing that functionality into our auth interceptor service it's by doing implements HTTP interceptor. Now, to implement HTTP interceptor, we need to have an intercept method. So I won't need this constructor here. But there's a particular method on the HTTP interceptor called intercept. And that takes the request, which is of the type HTTP request. And this could be any type of request. So we can just uh, put this any type here. And we also need to have the next operation after the next has occurred. And we can, and that's in here in the signature. So we can say next, and that's going to be how we handle it. So we're going to use a HTTP handle that we just imported. And what this intercept will return is it will return an observable of a HTTP event of any of the particular request type that we have. And what we need to do from this situation is we need to, okay, so I don't think we need this event emitter that just got brought in somehow but what we need to do here um, I think we just need to return what we want to return so we need to get something from local storage and we need to get the token from local storage so in the application tab in the browser in Google Chrome we can we've assigned this key value for the token so the keys token the value is the token itself and we can just simply grasp that from local storage and we can just get the item that we named token now we can just do an if check here just to make sure that we have the token so if we do have the token you know we can just sort of we need to what we what we're doing here is 
before we make an API request, so we have this service here and then, you know, in this auth service, we might sign up and it sends an API request to the server to know that we created. What we're doing here is we're attaching a particular header here um, and we're authorizing it. So recall that in the back end we have a um, we have added the middleware in in the back end here. We added this middleware where it checks the JSON web token and it verifies the JSON web token and that's done by getting the authorization header that was attached with the request and it was splitting it so there was bearer first as a convention and then the second element in the array or you know one the oneth element that will be the token itself so with that in mind if we once we get the token what we're doing here is we we still want to make the API request so we want to make a cloned request essentially so whatever the request was that we made we want to clone that request and there's a particular function on the request called clone from the HTTP request type and that just takes in the headers that are associated with that so we can say the headers is just going to be the request headers and we can set the request headers of the authorization type and we can set that to bearer plus the token itself. Now, if we, that's if the token's valid and, you know, is all good. So, all oh, we get a token from local storage and then we set the authorization header with bearer and then the token and then, you know, that will get handled. So, this um, interceptor is just all it's doing is we make a post request so we use say create post we click a button to create the post from the UI we click post and it, call, it uses our service our service just has content type application for its JSON um, but we're going to have this interceptor it's on the front end that just adds the token to the request and it handles it appropriately so then that will be sent to the back end and if it needs authentication then it will check for that particular header otherwise you know it will just carry on so what we need to do is we just need to return the we just need to handle that and we can call the next dot handle method to do that for that cloned request that we just created here but if that does not suffice, we can just say, um, or if there is no token, we can just return the request as is. So we can just handle the request. Or if we don't have the token yet and we're just logging in, oh well, yeah, logging in or signing up or something like that. So we've created the auth interceptor service. The next thing to take a look at, well, the next thing we need to do is we need to add it to the app module and we need to add something in particular to have that extra functionality in our application. And what that is, is we need to have the HTTP interceptors and that comes from the same location as this HTTP client module. So all capital letters here, HTTP interceptors, that's coming from Angular Common Core. So another thing we'll need, and we'll do this down here, is we'll need a service that we just created and we need to import the auth interceptor service from services slash auth interceptor service. Now it's declared but it's not read just yet, that's okay, we can deal with that. Now, rather than the declaration or the imports, we can go to the providers here and we can provide this particular object here. And what this particular object is going to consist of is we're going to provide 
the HTTP interceptors. So it's a little, little different to most cases, but it's very similar. And well, we're using this provider's um, array opposed to the declarations or imports, but that's because we have this extra sort of special functionality here. It's intercepting HTTP requests, so we need to provide that functionality and we can use a particular class and the class is the service that we just created. So the auth interceptor service is how we can deal with that. And I think I need an E here as well. Auth interceptor service. Hopefully I didn't make a spelling mistake. Okay, so that's okay. And we can just have this, you know, this other parameter multi equal to true. And this is just sort of the way Angular provides you a way to use the HTTP interceptor. So now that we've added the dependencies that we need to the model, well, we can, what we can do is we can just guard the routes as well. So we'll need to create another service for that. And let's just go ahead and type something in here. So NGGS generate a service in the services folder and we will need an auth guard because right now we can access the route for the post but we just we want to have some auth guarding we want to guard the routes based on the authentication of the user so we can just skip the test create that service okay and if we open up the auth guard service this is where we can start to write our code. So the auth guard service. Now the idea of the auth guard service is it returns a Boolean response or an observable Boolean response. And we're gonna determine if the user is logged in. And then if the user is logged in, um, then we can indeed verify that they're logged in and we can return a boolean true or false and this will be applied to the routes so there's a few things we need here we need to import can activate and this is what will be applied to the route and then we'll also import the router as well so we can reroute them after they you know if they're not logged in or something like that and we can get this from Angular Router. Now we can also get something from RxJS once again, and that is of course the observable. So we can return a observable Boolean type back because we're going to be constantly waiting for a particular value here. And I need to import that value from the auth service so we know if they're logged in or not. And we can import something from the auth service like that. So we can, of course, inject that into our constructor here. The private auth service of the type auth service. And of course, we need the router as well. So let's get that private router of the type router. Now we need to implement this can activate class. So let's implement that implements the can activate class and the can activate class requires a can activate method so we can create the can activate method here it doesn't take anything but it will return in our case an observable of the boolean type and we can just do a simple if check here so if the auth service so recall the auth service has access to this is user logged in and this is user logged in um, this is based on if they have logged in that's where we set the user is logged in and it also has associated data with its user ID this is where we can check that if the user is not logged in so that means if this auth service dot is user is not logged in and it has a particular value here 
um, the value of that observable. And while this is not true, we can just reroute them to the sign up page. So we can use the router to navigate them and we can just take them to sign up here. Um, but if, you know, and then otherwise we can just return this, well, else or, or including if this is logged in or not, we return this auth service dot is logged in. So what this is doing, if they're not logged in, it will navigate into the sign up page and it will return false here. But if they are logged in, it will skip this if check and it will return an observable true here. So this observable, this is what's required in our app routing module. And it's very simple to actually implement this here. Now that we've set up the groundwork, all we need to do is we just need to open up the, uh, the app routing module here and we can simply import the auth guard that we just created. So let's do that. Import auth guard from the services auth guard service. And now we've got our components here. Um, so what's wrong with this? Oh, it's declared but never read, that's okay. But in our routes, we don't want to be able to let users go to the post routes or performing of the API request or anything like that, even though they're secure on the back end anyway. But from a client UI sort of side, we don't want them to access that zone unless they have, have been authenticated. So they get their token, you know, they can check it's authenticated through the auth service, and if so, we have this auth guard that protects the route, it returns a boolean response, and that boolean response is associated with the can activate, so can we activate this route, and this is just simply auth guard. And we could have multiple things here that needs to pass, but we can just, you know, do this for now. And that's all we really need to do to protect our route. So one last thing that we might like to do here, and I might just close all of the tabs here, and I might just collapse everything just to get our bearings a little bit better. But one thing left to do is we have the ability to log in and sign up but it doesn't change the navigation. So this URLs here will just stay the same. So we sort of want to hide particular um, routes if they're logged in or if they're not logged in. So let's just adjust the navigation component a little bit based on the auth service. So let's just you know open that up, open up the source folder, open up the app folder, open up the components and open up the navigation bar. We will be working with the HTML and the TypeScript. So, okay, we can start with the TypeScript here and we're going to need the router to reroute them and we're going to need the auth service as well. So let's get those, we'll get the router first because that's from Angular Core or Angular Router. So we'll put the Angular stuff at the top here for organization purposes. And then I will also import the auth service. And that's going to be from, and we can just do this from the root directory here. Might be easiest to navigate without thinking too much. So we can get it from the services or service. Now, we will just have this one variable here and we'll just say is authenticated. And we'll say initially that that is equal to false. 
Of course, we'll need to inject the auth service to determine the um, truthfulness of that boolean and assign it accordingly. But for now, I'll just import the functionality from the auth service by injecting it into the constructor. And I'll also inject the router into the constructor as well. So the ng on init, this is going to, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to provide the ability to the user to um, log out. So we'll create this log out function here. So right now they can only log in. Let's just have a log out as well. And we just need to delete that token from local storage so we can just remove the item from the token item from local storage. And then from the auth service, from the variable of the, is the user logged in, what we can do is we can actually and if we look at the auth service, we can see that the is user logged in is a behavior subject, meaning we can actually force it to update. So what we can do here is, is the user logged in, we can call the next method and we can just pass in false here like that and that will update the variable's value to false. So that will keep everything, because um, we've used this auth service and multiple places there's multiple things that depend on the user being logged in so we need to omit that and then that will be accessible globally and then if they're not logged in so they well they are logged in and they log out it will just navigate them back to the login page so we can use the navigator from the router to navigate to the login route. So that's great, that's the logout functionality here. Um, from the navigation, we do want to actually subscribe to the auth service. So we have this auth service is if they're logged in, but what we need to do here is we need to actually you know subscribe to that. So we subscribe to this here, and we're going to get that you know, that Boolean response if they're logged in or not. And we can just say, so again, we're gonna get back is logged in. And in return, we can say this dot is authenticated. So we set our variable accessible in this area. And we can set that is equal to is logged in. So that's gonna be, you know, true or false. Um, so with that, we have all the functionality we need to make navigation changes based on the particular case that we're dealing with. So the social posts on the left hand side here, this will stay the same, but what will change is this on the right side. So in particular, we want to, we want to hide the post tab if they're not logged in and we want to show the login and sign up if they are not already logged in. So we can essentially add an ng if is authenticated here. So if they are authenticated, um, you know, we can just display this link here. So ng if is authenticated. So that check needs to be gone through. And of course, you know, we've got this local variable is authenticated, originally set to false, but it's subscribed to the auth service, which updates the Boolean value of if the user is logged in or not. So we can 
have this here, this check here. Um, and we can also add a similar check for the login case, but we can check that if they're not authenticated. And if they are authenticated, so we'll have this once again, we can instead show this logout functionality that we just created. And we need to call this method if they click on it. So if they click on this here, they can be, they can call this logout method, which will help in the re-rendering process here. And of course, if they're not authenticated, we can display the sign up. Otherwise, we, there's no real need to show the sign up at all. So let's do an npm start to see where we're at. And hopefully there's not too many errors because we did do quite a lot there without checking. So let's just have a look. Okay. So there's an error on importing the auth guard from the services. And this could simply just be that we didn't call it auth guard, we called it auth guard service. So if I open the auth guard service, I might just rename this to auth guard. So let's save that. Okay, and let's refresh the browser. And let's delete this token as well so we can start from scratch. Okay, great, so it's only showing logging and sign up. So let's say we've already signed up. We can go to here, and we can type in john at gmail.com and type in the password. We can sign up. And notice that it's changed from log in and sign up to post and log out. It's rerouted us to here. There's currently one post here and we've got our token and then our interceptor should attach that to the request. So let's say we have a new post title and we can say this is the new post body. Um, I'm not sure, do I make a request here? Hmm, I actually got some sort of error here. I'm not sure what happened there, but I might just try that again. I'll just do it with random letters here. So I make a post here. Now, there's obviously something going wrong here, otherwise it would display the post, and I'll just check that by refreshing the database. Okay, so there's been a problem. So we, in our create post component, when we click the submit button, we haven't actually, we're just console logging it. We haven't actually, um, you know, we haven't actually got the service in there or anything like that. So we want to actually get the post service and we also want the ID from the auth service as well. So we'll need to import both of these into the create post component. So let's do that. So we can start by importing the auth service, just because it's alphabetical order, auth service. And we can get that from, and from the root directory in the app folder in services, we can get the auth service and we can copy that and we can also get the post service here and that's just in the services folder in the post service folder uh, file so in the post service we can just go ahead and add those to our constructor and I've copied that from before to copy the auth service and the post service in here like this now Another thing I want to do is I, I don't always want to have the um, 
form open so I might just add another variable here below form here and I might just say is open and I'll set this equal to false and when you click on it it'll you know, toggle it open and if it's open um, it will show the form otherwise it will close it um, but what we can do with this auth service and this post service in the um, so we can create the form group obviously but in the on submit this is where we can access the post service and the auth service to be able to do what we want it to do and that's where we actually want to create um, you know call this create method after something's happened so rather than logging the form data what we'll do is with the post service with the create post we need to give it the form data that it needs and we can also just plug in this dot auth service dot user ID now we need to pipe and just get the first variable actually did we do this in the I'll just check if we've done this in the auth service already so we open up the auth service and for the auth service the user ID okay so the user ID is just simply a variable here okay so let's just pipe it through and we'll get the first one and the reason I'm doing this is just because I want to just subscribe to that variable to see if there's any changes in it and if there is this is when I will emit the event so I create a post and we're going to need this first uh, from RxJS again the operators there now I've got first from RxJS operators might just remove it from the bottom there and just put it below angular so I've got angular first then third party things like RxJS and then my stuff like the post model and services so you click on a you click submit so you type in the form data so the blog title and the blog post and we can use that post service we created to give it the form data and also the user ID and based on that that's if we get something back we created a post that's where we can emit that uh, event as occurring so that means we'll be able to create the post if we go back into the post component here we take a look at the uh, where is it the post component well the event that is triggered is this create post as you can see in the HTML here so then it will create the post and it will call fetch all and then it will re-render from the post service re-rendering the list so we can close that so all we really need to do is just sort of edit the HTML a little bit so we can open the form here and we've just created is open so we can just have this button here like this and this can be a map raised button with the color to that pink so accent here and we can just also nested within this button we can have a map icon for the add and we can just say create post and this will just you know toggle it up toggle the form state and we can just say click equal to is open so that variable we set initially to false equal to not is open so that will just allow the user to toggle that variable there and you know we can save that and we can actually we've got this form here like this and we can put a ng if on this so we can just say ng if everything is open here then we can you know we will display this form and the form has its values that we can submit and 
that's just submitted through the submit button in the corresponding form. So with that, let's now take a look here. So we can log in. Let's log in at gmail.com. Type in the password here. This will reroute us to this section here. Now this form has been closed. We can click it and open it up. We can say a new post title here like that. And we can give it a post body of a new post body. And if we post this, it displays it just below here. And one extra thing to notice here is that it has this delete icon because we've signed into this particular user. So now if I refresh the database and I can now see this new post here by user2 and that user corresponds to this john at gmail.com and if I then log out I can no longer access the route even if I tried in the URL here um, where we've seen that before but let's say I wanted to sign up okay let's say I got john2 at gmail.com oh sorry that's the first name so I make the email john2 at gmail.com and then I'll just call the first name john2 give the password a password sign up a user's registered um, so you know you can just add some rerouting functionality there to take them back to the login if you go to login you can go to john at gmail.com or john2 at gmail.com give it a password here sign up and now that delete thing is gone but if I make a new post and I just type in some random characters here you can see that because I'm logged in as that particular user that made the post then they have access to this delete item here so if I well first I'll just show that we have that and we do so that's the user but in the post let's just check we got that new post oh and we do as well so we made this user here has the idea of four for John 2 and that user is associated with the post that it's submitted and based on the user ID then that gives them access to the delete thing so let's just so we know we can fetch it we know we can post it let's just see that we can delete it so let's just try delete it and that just removes it from the list seamlessly and if we refresh our post it gets removed there so everything's working great I guess the only thing left to do is just when we sign up that it can reroute you to the login menu so let's go ahead and do that so in the sign up component let's just have a look here so rather than outputting the message user registered or in addition to that maybe um, what we can do here is we can just use the router so we can get that in here like this so the private router of the router import that in there we have that from angular so let's bring it up the top a little and we can copy the syntax from over here so this dot router dot navigate and I'll just navigate us straight um, to the login menu so I just where am I in the sign up section I need to add this so this uh, navigation to the login page so let's just do that and now let's just refresh everything let's go to sign up now I'll go john3 at gmail.com oh, I keep doing that john3 at gmail.com type in a password here and I'll just call this one john3 type in a password and it's taken us to the um, okay to the login menu so 
just to recap everything we've done here, we've, and I might actually just take us through a final step by step of everything. So what we've done is we started by creating a login page or a sign up page actually. The user can sign up, you know, they get registered, that goes into the database and in the users it hashes their password so we're not storing their password in directly and then we can log in and then if we log in as a particular user so john at gmail.com type in the password the bcrypt library compares the hash password to the password that they typed in and then we get rerouted to this protected area so we made it on the server that we protected the routes and we need to be authenticated and we give back a JSON web token if they are indeed authenticated, which it contains a secret. And then based on that secret that's associated with that token, you know, we can attach it to the API request that we make on the client. And you know, if all is well and good and the authentication is correct, then we can access the protected routes and we can go ahead and access this post section, otherwise we'll be the um, route guarding and authentication guarding. And we can use the functionality of our application to create the post, so the title or the body. We can make a post, it fetches all the posts in real time and we can delete a post. So thank you so much for following through this video series on social posts and there may be some more additional functionality added to it, but that's the major bulk of it. And I really hope you enjoyed the login system with Angular, Node, and MySQL. So for more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be releasing some stuff really soon, and I'll see you then. Thank you so much.